Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a brand new chipset from Intel inside one of their brand new NUCs. This is the NUC 7CJYH, and it's equipped with a new Gemini Lake processor, a J4005. This is the lower end of two different NUCs they'll be having with this new chipset over the next few weeks, and we'll try to get the other one in as well. And this new chipset is their new low-end processor that actually performs pretty nicely compared to the prior generation, which was called Apollo Lake. We're going to dive deeper into what this NUC can do and see what this chipset can do here in just a minute. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one has reviewed this content before it was uploaded. So let's get into it and see what this thing is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is a bare bones kit, which means when you buy it and try to plug it in, nothing will happen because you have to add RAM and storage. So as a result, the entry price on this is pretty low. I paid about $125 for this thing delivered, but I did have to add the RAM and the storage to get it into a fully functioning computer. There are two RAM slots inside. It takes DDR4 RAM now, up from DDR3 in the prior generation. That's a good thing. Uh, and it also has a SATA port on board for a two and a half inch notebook hard drive, similar to something like this. So you can use a solid state disk like this one, or you can use a spinning hard drive if you want more capacity and not, have, not looking to spend all that much money on storage. It'll take one of those laptop drives as well, uh, but only has that one SATA port on board and there's no M2 slot on this that uh, some devices like this might have. So you have one storage slot and that's it. Uh, but of course you could plug in USB storage if you wanted to augment some of that. Now the RAM and storage will likely cost as much as the NUC bare bones kit does, if not more. So you do have to budget appropriately. You also need to buy a Windows 10 license if you intend to run Windows 10 on here. So I think your entry cost will probably get you in around three or $400 when all is said and done. The other thing I recommend you do when you do look at memory for this device is to buy the memory in pairs because the computer will run faster when the RAM is used in pairs versus just a single stick of RAM. So in here I have two four gigabyte sticks of DDR4 RAM installed and that is what we'll be using uh, throughout the course of the testing that you will be seeing on this device in this video. Now as somebody who reviews a lot of low-end hardware I'm often very excited to check out the latest and greatest stuff in this sector of the market and this of course has the new Gemini Lake chip and this is the first Gemini Lake device that we've looked at here on the channel. Uh, this little NUC has a J4005 processor built in. It's a dual core chip and I believe it's the low end of the low end here. So this is kind of the entry point in this new product line. Uh, there will be a quad core version of this NUC uh, with a Pentium class processor shortly. Uh, it's also based on this Gemini Lake architecture. So we'll try to get that one in and see how much faster that chip is versus this one. But so far I've been pretty pleased with uh, what I have encountered with this little guy so far and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you in the course of this video. Uh, this new architecture adds DDR4 support so you'll have a little bit more memory bandwidth for different applications. It also has additional support for hardware encoding and decoding of some high-end video formats, namely HEVC at 10 bit. And one of the things you'll notice on the back of this little thing is that we've got two HDMI outputs. In fact, this will support two 4K displays at 60 hertz at the same time independent from each other. So you can have a, a dual 4K monitor set up with this thing. But, and there, here's the but, uh, I have not yet gotten a definitive determination as to whether or not this is going to support HDR video or not. Uh, at the moment, it certainly does not. I was not able to get it to output HDR video to my 4K TV upstairs, but uh, Intel has given mixed messages on this. Their marketing says that it will support HDR video, both on this uh, low-end NUC and the other one I hope to get in soon. Uh, and then on their message board, two employees responded to questions about HDR video. One said that it will support HDR. The other one said that it will not. So I have absolutely no idea at this point. And if you came to this video looking for an answer, I don't have one yet, but we will certainly do an update when we know one way or the other on this. So uh, <laughs> stay tuned. But uh, so far, it looks like at the moment, it's probably not an ideal home theater box for people looking for some high end uh, activity there, but it might do well in other uh, less demanding home theater environments. 
On the front here, you've got two USB ports. These are both USB 3 ports. This one is yellow because if the computer is off and you plug in your phone, it will charge your phone through that port, but otherwise they are the same uh, performing USB ports there on the front. You've got a combo headphone microphone jack slash audio output there, so you can plug headphones right into the front of the unit. Your power button is right there. And on the side here, you've got an SD card slot. This is a full-size SD card slot for downloading photos and whatnot. You got a Kensington lock on here, so nobody runs off with your brand new NUC. It also comes with a Visa mount in the box, so you can put it on the back of a monitor if you want, so you have that option available to you as well. We've got those two HDMI ports that I mentioned, gigabit ethernet here. You have optical audio out here if you are running some optical stuff out to your home theater receiver, for example. So you can do that or just plug in an analog output there. So you've got two audio outputs on this box. Two more USB 3 ports and the power adapter. Sadly, it does not support USB-C. I would, would have loved to have had like one of those multi-purpose jacks on here to plug in a dock or something to expand maybe some of its uh, port availability, but there is no USB-C on this one. It is strictly a uh, old school kind of connector here, but for the most part, I think it's got most of what people might look for. So that is the hardware tour, but let's get in and see exactly how this thing performs with our usual barrage of tests. And I'll add a few more things to the mix a little later in the video too, as this is our first experience with a Gemini Lake processor. All right, so I wanted to kick things off first with its graphical performance, specifically how well it handles the Dolphin emulator, which is something that often taxes a lot of low-end computers to the point where you really can't have a good playable experience out of it. But here we're getting frame rates at around 30 frames per second fairly consistently. Occasionally it'll drop down to like 25 or so, but even with all these other uh, jet skiers on screen with us here, this is very, very playable. I don't think we saw this kind of performance out of the Apollo Lake. It was close, but uh, not as good. And I think the last Apollo Lake I tested this with was the other Intel NUC we looked at last year, and that was a quad-core version. So this dual-core, the low end, is performing, at least with this emul emulator, exceptionally well. And I was very, very pleased to see uh, just how far this low-end hardware has come. So this might be a good little emulation box, certainly for MAME and other things, but even maybe some more demanding stuff here like the Dolphin emulator. So this was really cool to see that. Let me know if you'd like to see anything else tested on it so we can maybe do some follow-ups on the Extras channel. But this is a good indicator here of some of the improvements that we're seeing here at the low end of the processing spectrum, and I couldn't be more excited for this. And we also tested a few other games on this, like Rocket League, and there we were seeing similar frame rates at 1080p with all the settings turned down, about 20 or 30 frames per second. Uh, Minecraft also performed quite well. It was kind of a little bit all over the place on its frame rates, but uh, we were seeing stuff as high as 70 frames per second and certainly above 30 frames per second most of the time. So I think for Minecraft, it should do very well. Uh, this is running with the Java version of Minecraft as well. So perhaps if you ran the Windows 10 version, you might squeeze a little more performance out of it that way. And then some older games like Half-Life 2 really run nicely on this platform. Uh, there we were seeing frame rates above 30 frames per second most of the time a lot of times hovering into the 60 frames per second territory as well. So all in, I am uh, really quite pleased with the graphical performance that we're seeing out of this. Now we also ran the 3D Mark CloudGate test, which we run on all of these devices to see how well it handles graphics versus other ones like it. And there we got a score of 2,978, and that was a pretty good score for what we have inside of here. Now compare that to the Shuttle DX30, which is running with a dual core chip from the prior generation. And you can see the graphics scores are pretty close between these two, but the CPU score is much higher on the new NUC here with the new processor. You can see that score on the physics column there. 4.88 frames per second versus 2.92. So there's something going on inside this chip from a CPU perspective that is bringing us a lot better performance, which I think is translating out into a better emulation performance like you saw there with the Dolphin emulator. So that's a very encouraging sign that we've got some tweaks going on under the hood that are uh, lending itself to better CPU performance. Also take a look at the NUC we looked at last year, which was running with a quad-core Apollo Lake chip, the Pentium version. Uh, that one got a higher score on its uh, overall test here, 3,256. But uh, again, look at the graphics scores. They're very close. And uh, although the CPU is faster on the prior generation chip, it's not that much faster despite the fact that it has uh, two more cores. So I'm really eager to see how this new Gemini Lake chip will score in its quad-core variant 
on this test. I think we're going to see a pretty nice CPU bump on there as well. So every year we see a little bit better performance and we're certainly seeing that here uh, with this new device and that was really nice to see. I also tested the thermals on this to see how it does under load and it does have a fan that will kick on. It's not very loud and it's not that distracting. Uh, and we ran the 3D Mark stress test to see how well it can get rid of the heat, uh, not being all that loud or distracting. And there we got a score of 97.90%, uh, which is a passing grade, which indicates that we are not likely going to see a lot of performance degradation even under load. So if you're playing the Dolphin emulator for an hour or two, uh, you shouldn't see any real drop off in performance the more that you push the chip. Of course, the fan will be on, but again, not all that loud nor distracting. And I was uh, quite pleased with that overall. It's also very quick when you're just browsing the web and doing work and that kind of thing. You can see how fast the uh, NASA website pops up here for us. So a really nice browsing experience. Uh, right now I am connected to Ethernet, but it also supports wireless AC. So we had a very good browsing experience with that. We also kicked up my YouTube channel and a 1080p 60 video running there uh, ran just fine. There was one drop frame when it started, but that might have just been a browser glitch or something. But overall, it was able to maintain a 1080p 60 video uh, without issue there. So that was good to see. We also ran the speedometer uh, web benchmark test. And there we got a very high score, actually, uh, 70.9. And that was significantly higher than even the Minix N42C we tested a couple of weeks ago with the prior edition Apollo Lake chip. Uh, again, running in a quad-core Pentium variant, that one only scored 42.2. So something's going on here that, uh, at least for that web benchmark test, is giving us significantly better performance here. I was really pleased with that. It was also nice to see, too, that when I had this up on a 4K television, it felt snappy and responsive. It didn't really feel all that laggy uh, when I was browsing the web on my 4K TV upstairs, even with that um, the scaling enabled so that things weren't too tiny. It actually worked out pretty nicely on that display, too. So I think if you're doing some basic things like working on the computer on a 4K display, you know, word processing and email and that kind of thing, I think you'll have a pretty decent experience and it might make itself a, a fairly affordable workstation device uh, for an office or something like that. So let's move on now to home theater and we ran the usual jellyfish test file that we like to look at here on the channel. That ran without incident, both at 4K and 1080p. That's 140 megabits per second, 10-bit uh, HEVC, which decoded, again, perfectly on this device, no issues there. 1080p Blu-ray files also ran quite nicely on here. Uh, so we were able to pass through the lossless audio successfully to my home theater receiver, and it also shifted correctly to 24p for movies that were shot at that frame rate. So all those boxes were checked, but, uh, the HDR support just isn't there yet. Hopefully it will be coming. Uh, but right now you can play back those uh, Ultra HD movies, but they're not going to look very good on your fancy television because it just isn't switching the TV into that color mode. So again, I'm hoping we see that in the future, but at the moment I can't recommend this to an enthusiast because it just doesn't support HDR output at the time that I'm recording this video. So let's move on now to alternative operating systems. And I was able to get Ubuntu to load up, but there is a caveat here, uh, which is that I had to download one of the nightly builds of Ubuntu to get it to recognize all the drivers. Now at the time that I'm recording this, uh, this little box just came out. So the drivers for it are I'm guessing relatively new. The good news is that the nightly build here uh, was able to get the video working properly. It seems to be performing well. Uh, we've got audio and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and everything else functioning as expected here. So I think over time, uh, these drivers will get merged into the main release version of Ubuntu and you'll have a very good experience with it here. So. This is something that happens all the time with these little NUCs, especially when there's a new chipset change, is that it takes time for those drivers to get out. So uh, right now it is working again with the nightly build here, but uh, you will have some issues if you try to run an older build uh, with this without having to get through the process of uh, shoehorning drivers into your Linux installation to get it to work. But again, the nightly build here seems to be uh, working just fine with all features that I can see uh, supported. Another thing to note here related to this was that when we did install Windows on here, we had to go out to Intel and grab their drivers for the device. There was probably about 10 or 11 different drivers that we had to download and install individually. Uh, they do have a tool that will install on the NUC that will update itself 
uh, automatically, which might be the easier way to go about things. But uh, the initial setup was a bit of a task just to get all the, the right drivers in place to get it up and running. But I found over time that eventually those drivers are uh, integrated into Windows at least so that when you first boot the computer up, you won't have to go through that initial process, just maybe have to run some updates and whatnot. Another odd thing was that uh, Intel's graphics drivers for this were linking to KB Lake drivers, which were not compatible with this computer. I had to go to their prior edition drivers to get the graphics driver we needed to be able to even conduct our tests with this device. So uh, some things are just not quite there yet on Intel's website. It looks like they're first getting geared up to uh, support this new generation of processor, but that's to be expected sometimes when you are on the bleeding edge of a, a new generation of hardware. So all in, I am very pleased with the little NUC, with one exception, of course, which is the HDR support. So I'm hoping that uh, we'll see that come. It's not, not really clear if it is or it is not at this point, but I think that would make it a really killer device, even in this low-end dual-core form. It's performing exceptionally well, much better than I thought it would, and I'm very eager to check out the quad-core variant of this uh, when it's available. So I'll be on the lookout for it. If you see any available, let me know. I'll go and pick one up immediately so we can do a nice comparison here. And I will likely see a bunch of other computers running with this same processor uh, coming up from other manufacturers as well. So lots of stuff to see here with uh, Gemini Lake in the months to come. And I'm very encouraged by what I see so far. Let me know if you'd like to see anything else. We can maybe put some things up on the Extras channel or do a follow-up video on this one. Uh, so again, let me know down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.